Hey, I'm Brett McLaughlin. I'm here with Michael Morrison, who does work for Stalefish Labs, and I know you also do a lot of contract work on iPad, iPhone, all the iOS stuff. Uh, and I know we're talking about consuming network services, which I'm psyched about. I think that a lot of us think about iPhone apps as these standalone things that run on network devices, but we're actually looking at going out and getting information over the network from a server and even from other servers, right? Right, right, because you know they are network devices right. and, and most apps do need are network aware or benefit right. a lot from being network aware. So, And this is know. not just grabbing a URL from Safari and, and showing a web page. I mean, we're actually going to parse and use data Remotely, right? Exactly. We're going to pull. We're going to pull data straight down from a podcast in this case. Okay. It's going. To, it's going to arrive to us as, as XML. Parse okay. it out. Stick it in a table and do some cool stuff with it. Very nice. Well, let's get going. Yeah. So this is really similar to the RSS feed. It's for, it's formatted a little bit differently, right? I mean, this isn't Correct. RSS, obviously. So why right. not use Touch XML? PLIS or what's a standard part of Objective C, right? Right. PLIS is, is an Apple thing, and mm -hmm. it's a standard. It, it is supported by uh, default in Objective C. That's why the reason you don't need Touch XML is because PLIS can be parsed directly into arrays and dictionaries okay. by Objective C. Okay. In fact, if we go and look at our into our view controller, we'll see where we load. We have this NS array of documents. Right. That guy is filled out right here in view did load okay. by grabbing the main bundle of the app, okay. which is the resource bundle. Right. And so everything in your resources is now available through that bundle. Correct. And then we say path for resource, which is documents. And if you look over here, documents.plist okay. is what we were referring to. Right. And we say it is indeed a P list because right. you could load other resources. Right, and then you retain that and because we it wasn't retain Alec it. or anything. Right, and that yeah. documents array is what we we use to uh, populate and and uh, drive the table. Okay. Um, okay, and I imagine that's very similar. Is grab the title, grab the subtitle. Correct. Correct. So let's go ahead and look at that real fast in table. Uh, we do have a section in this case called documents that gives us our little title up there mm -hmm. in the table, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we return documents count yeah. to get the number of rows, sure. and then we set the text label and deta detail text label, which is okay. title subtitle. Right, so and this time there is no chevron, there's no action for clicking it. You have to click the button down exactly. at the bottom. Exactly, so we don't bother setting the cell uh, accessory type. Yep. Uh, one other thing that is worth noting, here's our data loading guy again. I remember, we added, yep. Uh, to the other example, so we've used a similar pattern here in terms of download button tapped is wired to get called when we hit that download button. Mm -hmm. And we can go over an interface builder and see that. If we open view controller over here, here's our view, right. you can see our table, here's that download button, and uh, that's wired up to call this method, okay. which is equivalent in many ways to our load items that right. we saw earlier. Right. So it checks data So that triggers whichever row is selected in the table. Right. Link that up with the array, go get that particular Yeah, or, or actually it, it's a little before, it actually just kicks off the URL connection loading. Okay. Yep, yep. And then, and then when that, and, and this time we don't have to deal with, uh, remember we're not dealing with XML data anymore. Right. Remember how we had to set the HTTP yeah, header right. to accept. Right. That's no longer necessary. So now we can just create the request URL, stick it right in the URL connection, and we're done. I see. So, uh, okay. so, so loading a, uh, a normal file is actually a little simpler than loading XML or JSON right. or something. Okay. Um, and then finally down in our connection, our URL.